For decades, finasteride has been prescribed as a daily medication. Just take this one milligram tablet every day for as long as you care about having your hair. But could that one milligram daily dose be overkill? For some of you, it just might be. And that could be due to the finer details of how finasteride actually works. What we're talking about today could totally change your approach on how you manage your hair loss. That's because we're going to be covering why finasteride is prescribed daily and why that can lead to problems. We'll also talk about why not taking finasteride every day will still help you keep your hair as well as what types of customized doses you can take. I'll even let you in on how this type of dosing has worked out in my practice. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So why is finasteride prescribed as a daily medication? Well, to understand that, we need to briefly go over how medications work when you actually take them. So for any medication to work, you need to maintain a certain amount of the medication in your bloodstream for it to have an effect, but your body is constantly getting rid of that medication after you take it. A term we need to understand is half-life. So that's the amount of time it takes for one dose of a medication to drop in concentration by about 50% in your body. Finasteride has a half-life of about six to eight hours in your bloodstream. So to maintain the concentration of finasteride in your bloodstream over 50% for a full day, you would theoretically need to take it three to four times a day, but that's not the case with finasteride. Finasteride has done its job of lowering your DHT levels by 70% about eight hours after taking the medication. And those DHT levels in your bloodstream are going to stay low for about four to five days after a single dose. The problem is that your body is constantly making more enzyme to convert testosterone to DHT. So in turn, the recommendation is to take it every day to constantly be decreasing the levels of 5-alpha reductase. The problem with daily use is that finasteride levels slowly rise over time. That's because the medication builds up in your system with each dose. So as the medication builds in your system, it can now block more conversion of testosterone to DHT. The body now has an increased level of testosterone and it needs to do something with it. So it converts it to estradiol or estrogen. And while it's important to have those two hormones in men, higher levels of it can cause side effects that finasteride is so sorely misunderstood for. Things like erectile dysfunction, low libido, low semen volume at ejaculation, gynecomastia, and a few others. And yeah, none of those sound like any fun. But for some men, daily use isn't a problem and they can use finasteride daily for decades without any side effects. But some of you are a little more sensitive to the medication and you start to get some of the side effects we mentioned when you take it every day. This is where not taking the medication every day comes into play. By not taking finasteride daily, we can decrease the risk of you having side effects to potentially lower than the already low risk of about 2% with daily use. So then why does non-daily finasteride actually work? The reason has to do with the enzyme. A testosterone is converted to DHT by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Once your DHT levels rise high enough, you start going bald. Finasteride binds to the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme and disables it, meaning once finasteride binds to the enzyme, it's out of the game. So it can't have an effect until the body makes more new enzymes. And here's the interesting part. Finasteride has been shown to have a half-life of about 30 days in the hair follicle itself, meaning one dose of finasteride can decrease 5-alpha reductase levels at the hair follicle itself for a much longer period of time compared to what it does in the bloodstream. Well, you might be wondering then, why can't I just take finasteride once a month? That's because your body is always making more 5-alpha reductase. In fact, it takes about two to four weeks for those 5-alpha reductase levels to get back to a normal level again. And as those levels of 5-alpha reductase rise, so does the amount of DHT being produced. Eventually, that level of DHT rises above your body's trigger point and your hair loss starts again. So with intermittent dosing, we are always pushing your DHT levels back down just below the threshold of where your hair loss starts. We're trying to balance having a good overall effect to help you keep your hair, but at the same time, hover right at that level where we don't cause any side effects. Well then how often does someone take finasteride on an intermittent dosing schedule? For my patients, I typically will have them take one milligram tablet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Saturday and Sunday, we take a little break to allow those levels of the medication to fall off a little bit, and then we get back on schedule again on Monday. But here's the great thing about finasteride. It works at doses less than one milligram, meaning that you could have the same effect on your hair loss with even less risk of side effects. And this is where customized dosing of finasteride comes into play. So then what dose should you take? Well, that depends on a couple of factors. The first thing we have to consider is how small of a dose you can take and still have an effect. Finasteride for hair loss generally comes in the form of a one milligram tablet. That was the dose that was found to be the most effective in preserving your hair with the least amount of side effects in the studies that were done. But in those same studies, finasteride was shown to be effective in doses as small as 0.2 milligrams. The problem with the 0.2 milligram dose is that it may be effective in some people 
and not in others. The reason being is that it blocks less of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme compared to the 1 milligram dose. The 0.2 milligram dose was shown to block about 69% of the receptors compared to the 71% of the receptors that are blocked with the 1 milligram dose. Even though these lower doses can block near similar levels of 5-alpha reductase, the best course of action is to always to block as much of the enzyme as possible. Because what we want to do is push those DHT levels down just low enough that you get to keep your hair but also not trigger any side effects. So for some of you, you are going to be perfect for the one milligram dose, and some of you are going to need a lower dose. And in my practice, I really work with 0.5 milligrams and one milligram doses. It just keeps it easier on patients when taking the medication. So then what dose is right for you? I really tend to base this decision off three things. The first is the age of the patient. Younger patients tend to produce more 5-alpha reductase, so they are more likely to benefit from a higher dose or maybe even more frequent dosing. Older patients may not have such high levels of 5-alpha reductase in their system, so they may actually only need a smaller dose. The second factor that I consider is the rate at which the patient is losing their hair. Patients that have aggressive hair loss will benefit from higher doses to stabilize their hair loss. That higher dose gives us a better chance of success at stabilizing their hair loss because we know that more of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme is blocked when we're closer to that one milligram dose. That higher dose gives us a better chance of success of stabilizing their hair loss because we know that more of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme is blocked when we're closer to that one milligram dose. On the other hand, patients that say that their hair loss has been slowly progressing over five to 10 years, they likely have a 5-alpha reductase level that's just above the threshold that's causing their hair to fall out. Those patients can likely start out on a lower dose of finasteride and still see some good results. The third factor that I consider is how concerned the patient is with the risks of side effects. Patients that understand the risks of side effects are small will get started on one milligram dosing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Men that have had side effects or are super nervous about the risk of side effects, I'll have them start on 0.5 milligrams twice a week, Monday and Thursday. And we'll do this for about four months before we meet again to evaluate their response. So how well has this worked out in my practice? Well, I started using this dosing method for finasteride back in 2020 when we all had to spend a little extra time at home. That's when I came across a video here on YouTube itself from The Hair Loss Show with Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash. If you don't know who those two guys are, where have you been? They are two hair transplant surgeons down in Australia and their video made a lot of sense. So I started using it here in my practice and the response was great. Men were much less hesitant to start treating their hair loss and some of them actually recovered enough hair that we didn't need to do a hair transplant anymore. Have I had patients have side effects on this dosing schedule? Yeah, about maybe one per year out of the multitudes of men that I see every year for their hair loss. And all of those guys that had side effects, they had all their issues resolved after taking a break from the medication for a few months. After that, we found a solution to treat their hair loss that worked for them and continue the path to helping them keep their hair for a much longer period of time. The main thing to keep in mind here is that the prescribing of finasteride as a daily pill is not a hard and fast rule. Microdosing, intermittent dosing, whatever you wanna call it, has the goal of finding the sweet spot for you so that you can keep your DHT levels just below the level needed to prevent hair loss and to prevent side effects. This customized dosing is the reason why it's important to meet with a doctor that specializes in treating hair loss. So that way you can get on a dose that's not just right for you, but also helps decrease the risk of side effects. After all, the goal here is to maximize the amount of hair that you get to keep over time, without having to worry about how things are gonna work below the belt. And speaking of maximizing the amount of hair you're gonna keep over time, your hair loss treatment has been shown to be the best when it includes both finasteride and minoxidil. And to learn all about minoxidil, you can watch this video right here. I'm Dr. Paul Pierce, and I hope you learned something today. I'll see you in the next video.